I recently came across a new product offering from AdGuard. Turns out, AdGuard is beta testing its own email alias service. Basically, it's a competitor to something like Simple Login. Considering AdGuard has a decent reputation, and I frequently use their temp mail service, I figured I would try it out myself. Let's go ahead and dive on in. Setting up an account was pretty simple and straightforward. Simply click on the button for the web version. Agree to the terms of service, which will be covered later in the video. Click through a few helpful prompts. And then you're ready to start creating your account. At the time of recording, all that's needed is an email and a password. As you can see, even temporary email addresses are also accepted for creating an account. Once you've submitted an email verification pin, you are good to go. In the dashboard, you can see all options and settings are laid out on the left side. Here we have tabs for our aliases, forwarding email addresses, statistics, settings, and support. AdGuard also provides a tab to conveniently access their temp mail service. Creating aliases is very easy and straightforward. When you create an alias, you are given multiple customization options. Bear in mind these settings aren't permanent and can be adjusted later if the user wants to do so. When creating your very first alias, AdGuard sends you a welcome email to the recipient email account. This message not only confirms that emails are being forwarded correctly, but also offers tips to the user regarding what AdGuard email can offer. As far as the number of aliases goes, I haven't seen any rules on the maximum number allowed for a user. So far, I've been able to create five aliases without any issue. Given that this service is still in beta, I'd imagine the maximum limit is fairly high. However, it wouldn't surprise me if the limits are changed once the beta is over and AdGuard starts rolling out paid plans. Now it's time to discuss the privacy policy. To their credit, AdGuard was kind enough to spell out the reasons why they need certain bits of data using non-legal jargon that you typically find in these policies and agreements. However, there was definitely a section in the policy that raised an eyebrow. It would seem Amazon's email forwarding service is the backbone for AdGuard's own service. What's troubling is the fact that Amazon collects and stores the contents and metadata of your emails. Allegedly, the data is stored temporarily and then deleted after a certain time. However, the storage time is not specifically defined at all. For all we know, it could be days, weeks, or even months. In all fairness, I'm not completely faulting AdGuard for using such a service. After all, the service is in the beta stage and Amazon service could just be a temporary thing until AdGuard builds its own backbone to replace it. What I do criticize AdGuard for is claiming Amazon as a trusted provider that maintains privacy and security standards. Something that can be easily disproven. Uh, but anyway, Portland has a, uh, a new uh, bill coming through that's going to outright ban facial recognition in both public and in private uh, situations, like an outright ban, like done. Uh, because they're like, there's a lot of problems and challenges. Well, Amazon's like, no, nah, we don't really want that. But they're trying to be quiet about it. They don't really want to draw attention. But they spent $12,000 lobbying against facial recognition in one city. That's kind of crazy. Now, this story is just one of the examples of what can happen when your smart home has no loyalty to you and it actually goes against you. It might lock you out of it for an entire week for being racist, yeah. And now company news. Amazon powered AI cameras have been used to detect emotions of unwitting UK train passengers. Thousands of people catching trains in the UK likely had their faces scanned by Amazon software as part of a widespread AI trial. This is based on some new documents. So the image recognition system was used to predict travelers' age, gender, and potential emotions with the suggestion that the data could be used in advertising systems in the future. And our, we only have two research stories this week. Our other story is a study about how Amazon uses Echo smart speaker conversations to target ads. I'm going to quote the article. Amazon and third-party services have been using smart speaker interaction data for ad targeting in violation of privacy commitments, according to researchers at four U.S. universities. And there are plenty of other examples to further disprove AdGuard's statement. But I think I've made my point. So with all that being said, what's the use case for this service? 
Well, as it is still a product in the beta stage, I would probably limit this service for anonymous purposes. Basically anything where your real identity isn't attached or even required. Things like free trials would be fine, but banking and other personal stuff is definitely not recommended. Of course, I also recommend using a separate email address to register for AdGuard Mail for added separation. While I do admire AdGuard for offering an alternative to simple login, I can't in good conscience recommend it for anything beyond throwaway accounts and free trials. Hopefully the final product won't be relying on Amazon, in which case I'll gladly adjust my recommendations.